work together for my good And I know that all things work together for my good Help me say
because our Father has freed us. Y'all sing, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never. And I'll never. And yeah, that's it. Hey, lift your voice and sing it. Say, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never. And I'll never. Yeah, I think I like that. Sing it again. Hey. Sing, thank God I'm free. Thank God free. And I'll never, and I'll never hey. be bound. Hey, yeah. Say, thank hey. God I'm free. Thank God. Yeah. And I'll never, and I'll never be, bound be bound again. Come on, stay right there. up again, yeah. Just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Y'all sing it. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Family, one of the major components of relationship is trust. And one of the main ways that we show God that we trust him is in the tithe and the offering. What we do is we pour out the resources that God has given us. and We give back the first tenth of all of our increase to our Father. The tithe is important, y'all. The tithe says, I'm in relationship with you, God. I trust you, God. And I believe that what you said concerning my money and what you can do with my finances is greater than what I can do with my finances. The great thing about this is that God says, I'm gonna give you 100, let you keep 90, and trust you to bring me back 10. And so what I wanna do is see that us as a family, would say, God, you can trust us with the hundred and we'll give you back the 10. I don't want you to be a person who tries to do it all yourself. I want you to involve God in your finances. The number one way we do that is with the tithe and the offering. Be a tither, be a sower, be a giver. Listen, y'all, while we're here, I wanna remind you that Tuesday night at eight o'clock on Facebook is our City Conversations. It's gonna be such an incredible moment in the word. I really want you to be there. Lock in with me, set a reminder now that you'll be on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on Facebook for City Conversations. So uh, uh, make sure that we continue to be faithful in the tithe. We continue to be faithful in giving and sowing. And let's see God do great things, not just in our finances, but in our entire lives. In your presence, I will dwell in the shed. Of you, the most high, in you I will abide in your presence. 
We'll trust you through anything. Yes, Lord. Your presence, I will dwell in the shelter of you, the most high. In you, I will love. Say you are my refuge, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. Saying, I will trust you, Lord. I will trust you, oh God. In times of trouble, still you are with me. Oh 
City of Faith family, I'm believing God for great things in your life. And I believe that there's a word right now that's going to transform you. It's going to transform our lives. It's going to transform our homes. And I want you to lock all the way in with me now for this word. We've just kind of crept into July. I know it feels like this year is flying by and it's been tricky and challenging. It's been crazy, some stuff we never thought we would see. But I just want to encourage you that God still has time. God still has room to move on our behalf. And this can still be your year. We still believe 2020 is gonna be big. Uh, I want you to go ahead and jump into the word with me. John chapter 20, I want you to get your cell phone, get your iPad, get your Bible. Some of us still use paper Bibles. It's all good. Ain't nothing like turning pages. Um, But get whatever you got. Get a little highlighter. Get something to take some notes in because I believe that there's going to be a word somewhere in here that's going to speak to you. And I don't want you to miss it. I want you to be able to write it down, connect with it, stay connected with it. Uh, Let me know you're ready. Jump in the comments. If you're watching with me here on YouTube or Facebook and just say, hey, 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 I'm ready. I'm in, Pastor. I'm ready. PC, I'm ready to go. Uh, John chapter 20. I want to read two verses for us uh, right here. John chapter 20. Um, I want to start reading at verse 24. I'm in the New Living Translation. Uh, Follow along wherever you are or catch up and we'll throw it on the screen just to make it that much easier for you. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 24 says, one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. 25, they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, his reply is crucial to us. He replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Father God, please speak to your children. We need a word now. Amen. Y'all, this is a very loaded text, and I want to kind of tiptoe into this and spend some time in as we focus on this intriguing but but kind of lightly mentioned character in Scripture. Thomas is one of the Uh, less talked about disciples, but he's a very important figure nonetheless. So you may not have heard much about the apostle Thomas, or you may not have heard much about the disciple Thomas, but I would believe that many of us have heard of Doubting Thomas. (laughs) And I want to speak to this name that's been given to this man, the disciple of Jesus, who was an apostle of the Lord's church. And this famous exchange happens between Thomas and the disciples after the resurrection of Jesus. And so Jesus reveals himself to the disciples in his resurrected and glorified body. And this all takes place in John 20, but it marks Thomas for all of history because of one statement. The disciples who had seen Jesus said to Thomas, we just saw the Lord. And Thomas said, I won't believe it unless I see him. And just like that, now Thomas has been marked for all of the church history, all of the history of the world as Doubting Thomas. Even unbelievers have probably heard of Doubting Thomas. You don't have to have a Bible history to have known and have heard of Doubting Thomas. It's that famous based on that one statement where he said, I know y'all saw him, but until I see him, I won't believe. Now, this is tricky for me, and there's a tension in the text because the others saw Jesus and believed. But we can't just automatically agree that all of them wouldn't have hesitated to believe just like Thomas. No, Jesus appeared to them Out of nowhere, they were gathered together, and Jesus just appears in the room that they're in. But then the next step is when when they come to tell Thomas, Thomas says, eh, I don't know. Now, if we had reversed the roles and put any of the other disciples where Thomas was, I can't just automatically say that they wouldn't have hesitated just like Thomas did. And in verse 29, Jesus says to Thomas, blessed are those who believe without seeing. But 
But the problem I have with that, the tension in the text for me is nobody believed without seeing. I believe Thomas was put in this impossible situation for our good and our benefit the benefit of our faith, because now we have this word where Jesus says to us as believers across the world, he says to us now of all time, all across history, all across creation, he says, hey, you're blessed when you believe, when you have not seen. And so Thomas is put in this impossible situation for our benefit. The challenge of the gospel Family is to have faith in what you can't see and is physically impossible for men. See, 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 the challenge of the gospel is you're reading about stuff that we don't necessarily see as normal and every day and that can uh, potentially happen in in our power. It's too much for our minds to conceive, but the challenge of the gospel is have faith in that. Some people in the world has even gone as far as to call this thing a fairy tale. But Jesus' response is, blessed are those who have not seen but still believe. 1 Corinthians 1.18 speaks to us believers. It speaks to us people of God. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know that it is the very power of God. The Bible has spoken to everything we face now. There is an answer. Here's what I want to pull out, though, and dig in in, dig in on in this text. Uh, Verse 25, very crucial. Let's look at it. Highlight verse 25 in your Bible. He says, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side rock with me here walk with me because we're going into something heavy thomas doesn't just say i need to see he says i need to touch he didn't just say i need to see to believe he said i'm not gonna believe unless i see go with me and touch i believe family that one of the reasons that the church has lost some of its influence in the world is that we have become untouchable We've become untouchable. Oh, we've become untouchable. We don't want anybody to touch us anymore. We, 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 we don't like the dirty stuff. We don't like the nasty parts no more. We don't like the stuff. We don't want nobody to mess with us no more. We want to keep our own space. We want to keep our distance. We want to do our own thing. But, but, but we might have lost our influence in the world because we don't want to be touched no more. The church... It's no longer touchable. We've become too focused on how to market the church to be heard. And the church can't be touched. The church can't be felt. Because all we're doing is pushing it to be heard. we all after fame and glory. <laughs> but nobody's touching anymore. What happened to the days? Well, we reached out and touched the hurting and the lost. What happened to the days when, like the Bible says, we laid hands on the sick and they recovered? What happened to the days when we would touch? The church is no longer touchable. I ask you this question, are we being felt or are we being heard? Oh, because there's a difference. Um, um, Thomas didn't say, I'll know Jesus, I'll believe when I hear Jesus speak. He said, I'll believe when I touch him. Thomas didn't want to hear about what the other disciples saw. He wanted to feel where Jesus had been. He didn't want to hear about what the disciples had seen. He wanted to feel where Jesus had been. Family, people don't need to hear us. They need to feel where we've been. Walk with me. The body of Christ has a testimony. There's a reason that we've been through all the stuff that we've been through and we've overcome every single bit of it. We haven't just seen the power of God just to see it, but we felt and experienced it and we walked in it. Hear me, you were exposed to something so that you could share it. 
I need you to understand something. I know when you look at folk, you wonder why they're as anointed as they are sometimes, or you wonder why they have they, they don't mind talking to people, or you wonder why it feels like they got a different juice than you got or a different oil than you got. But the reality is when you've been through something, it births something inside of you. When you've seen some things that were supposed to knock you out, you've seen some things that were supposed to take you out, you've seen some things that were supposed to destroy you and make you lose your mind then it makes you appreciate what you've overcome even that much more the body of Christ has a testimony there's a reason that you've been through all of this stuff and you still made it out somebody just holler back at your boy right quick and just say I made it out come on right here in the comments go with me somebody just shout in your living room I know you watching on TV but just just holler back at your boy make me feel like I'm in church and just holler back at me and say I made it out I remember all the hell I've been through I made it out, though. I look back at all the stuff I overcame, but I made it out. John identifies something for me. Here in the text, Thomas wasn't satisfied with seeing Jesus alive. Oh, don't miss this. Thomas wasn't satisfied with seeing Jesus alive. He needed to see Jesus healed. <laughs> Screenshot, screenshot that one. Screenshot that one. Thomas, take a picture of your TV. Thomas wasn't satisfied with seeing Jesus alive. He needed to see Jesus healed. I told us over and over again, we are the proof that our product works. What does that mean? Make that make sense for me, PC. Uh, we can't keep telling folks about our God that we serve that's a healer and, and we can't overcome a cold. Uh-oh. Uh, we can't keep telling people about the God who can bring us through anything, yet we stay defeated. You're the proof that the product works. Oh, the power is being tested on you. Go with me. I, I remember hearing a story about a company that made tables. Y'all, walk with me, please. This is for you. Wherever you are in your home, this is for you. Uh, walk with me, please. I remember hearing a story about a company that made tables, and the thing about it is, is their claim was this table will hold up to 500 pounds. And the manufacturer said, the maker of the table said, I can be sure that the table will hold 500 pounds. Watch this. Because I didn't test the table with 500 pounds. I tested the table with 3,500 pounds. Somebody walk with me. I didn't test the table with, I said 500, but I put 3,500 on it because I wanted you to know that I could have confidence and have faith in saying 500 because I put 3,500 on it and it still stood up. What are you saying? Make it make sense for me, PC, bring it into my life, is that God said after all the stuff that you've been through, everything I put on you, the reason we can tell the world that Jesus works and Jesus saves is because he saved some ratchet, messed up, nasty, flaky, fickle, ugly, disrespectful, bad attitude, having people like us. So if Jesus, if the blood of Jesus can work on us, we know it can work on them. Why? Because the maker said, I tested it first. Thomas said, I'm not satisfied with seeing Jesus alive. I want to see Jesus healed. You, you're the proof that the product works. You are not facing different sets of problems because you're a believer. You're, you're actually facing the same attacks as the rest of the world. The thing is, though, you have a different hope. Uh, you have a Savior. You have a God you can call. You have the power to overcome these things. See, people don't care about what you faced. They need to see what you beat. You don't need to know what I went through. You need to know what I overcame. It doesn't matter what I faced. What matters is what I beat because that's what, that's, that's what we got to talk about. Why do I care about your God if you couldn't overcome my struggles? See, the kingdom ministry isn't about how well you talk. It's about how well you heal. Thomas said, 
I need to see the holes. I need to put my hands in the holes. He didn't want to see Jesus. He wanted to feel Jesus. What am I saying to you, family? The, 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 the people around you don't want to hear you. They want to feel you. They, they uh, I can hear your knowledge, but, but can I feel your power? Can I feel your hope? Can I feel your, your strength? Can I feel what's in you working on the inside that I don't have in me until I feel that? I, I don't believe you're Jesus. He didn't want to see Jesus. He wanted to feel Jesus. People don't want to hear about you. They want to feel you. See, Thomas has seen Jesus on the cross. He saw what Jesus endured. He saw Jesus bruised and pierced. But, but now, if he's alive, I need to see that he defeated that like he said he would. Hold up. I saw him being beat up. I saw the crown of thorns. I saw the blood. I saw all of this stuff. So now, if you tell me that's Jesus, I, I need to know that he overcame it. Y'all, let me be real, though, because I'm messed up by the fact that when Jesus was resurrected and got this new body, that the holes from the cross were still on him. Oh, y'all, Jesus, Jesus went down into the grave, got up, resurrected, all power, all that, right? But for some reason, when he got up, he kept the holes in his hands and in his sides, and he, he kept the scars from what he had been through. The cross was too big for Jesus to do away with the reminder of the price he paid for our sins. See, it's proof, it's proof to you that what you've been through was to remind you of the power on your life to overcome. You're not regular, you're an overcomer. You're a conqueror. You're more than an overcomer. Uh, don't hide your scars, because when you hide your scars, you may just forget what God has brought you through. Oh, and I need to tell you something. Oh, city of faith, don't forget. Don't forget. Somebody just type back in, holler back at me. I won't forget. Come on. I won't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget, don't you dare forget what God has already done while you're asking him to do more. Oh, don't hide your scars because you might just forget what God already brought you through. Don't forget, I'm not going to forget. I remember what it felt like when I was going through hell and crying myself to sleep every day. I remember, you remember, you remember when you didn't want to get up out of the bed, it hurt. You, you remember when you were broken. You remember when you didn't know how you were going to make it. You remember when you thought sickness would destroy you. You remember what you've been through. And God said, don't hide your scars because the minute you hide your scars, you might just forget what I brought you out of. Doubting doesn't mean you lack faith. It proves that you're human. See, I want to bring back an idea that I taught on earlier this year that I believe this text speaks to. And that is that Thomas, I believe, has what we identify as faith trauma. See, faith trauma, it, it refers to a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. Because, see, it can be, it can be hard to believe for the future when you've been hurt too bad in the past. Oh, it can be hard to have faith for tomorrow when yesterday was a struggle for me to get through. I know some people right now are looking at me and saying, PC, I don't know if I believe 2020 is my year no more because the first half of 2020 has been too rough. And because of how rough the first half of 2020 has been, I'm struggling with this idea that the back half is going to be better. Family, I need you to know something. God never lies. God never changes his mind. And whatever you've heard him say, it has to come to pass. Because when God speaks, he creates. His words create. That means that when he opened his mouth to declare something over your future, not only did he say it, he created it. You're getting ready to walk into it. 
Somebody just wave your hand in your house. I'm, I'm walking into it. Wave your hand in your car while you drive. Keep one on the wheel, but on the other hand, just say, I'm getting ready to walk into it. I'm walking into something. See, it can be hard, though, to believe for the future when you've had too much trauma in the past. Thomas has just watched Jesus go through all of this stuff. Then he had to be told by other people Jesus showed back up on a day he wasn't present. But wait, though, because I have a problem. Because, see, Thomas, here's, here's, here's more attention in the text, because Thomas has seen Jesus raise other people from the dead. He even said in chapter 11, he was ready to go with Jesus even into death. Now, all of a sudden, though, he has to believe for himself. And that's where damaged faith can be problematic. See, let me, let me, it's easier to have faith for others than it is to believe for your own situation. It, it's easier to believe for others than it is to believe. Hey, when you got to pray for everybody else, your faith is strong, ain't it? Come on, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, when you got to go, when you got to go tell somebody else, oh, no, God's going to do it. I believe God promised us he's a healer. He's Jehovah. Rock. We got all the Bible. We got all of that stuff. But, but, but then when it's time for it to work on me, whew, I get weak. The words escape me. I, my mind is, I, there's some stuff in my mind that I can't find. I, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for it. What I just told my sister the other day, I can't remember it now. What I told my brother last week, I, I, I'm struggling to remember it now. But it's, it's easier to have faith for others than it is to believe for our own situation sometimes. And see, right now we're facing a pandemic that doesn't seem to be getting better. Then we got racism on top of that and corruption across politics and so many other things. We got all these issues across our country. And we're still trying to be positive and have faith that things will turn around for us. So watch this. Look, look, at, the, look at how it ties together. Thomas ha has seen Jesus be crucified. They've had to go through all of this stuff. They've had to walk the earth without the presence of God. They've had all of this stuff happen. And then they said, hey, Jesus came back. We saw him. And it's just like you. Right now, all of this stuff is happening. There's hell going on all around us. The world looks so out of sorts. We can't even see how it might turn around anytime soon. And then we're still talking about be positive. Have faith. God's still in control. And all of that is absolutely true, but it can be hard to believe in the middle of some trauma. Y'all, give yourself grace because our faith has had to endure some trauma. See, being a believer now means more than it did a year ago. Being a believer today means more than it did January 1st. <laughs> July, the top of July. Being a believer at the beginning of July means more than it meant at the beginning of January. But hear me, you've been through too much to not believe that God can and God will deliver us again. This season is hard, but it's not too hard. Hear me. This season is this, this, the trouble is big, but it's not bigger than your God. We're hurting, but not so much that God can't heal. Feels like things are out of control, but not to the point where God can't right the ship. We almost feel like we're losing hope. But Christ is the hope of the world. And so I want to pray for us now. I want to pray for us in this moment. For every person. Let's just do this. Let's just turn wherever you are. Turn it into a sanctuary. If you're in your bedroom, turn it into a sanctuary. Come on, stand. Let's just take this prayer moment really seriously. 
jump all the way in with me on this prayer moment right here, y'all. Wherever we are, whatever's going on, dig in with me on this. Father God, I pray for every person who finds himself in a hard place in terms of their faith. We've been going through so much stuff. We've had to overcome and endure so much stuff. But Lord, help us to remember that it's these moments that you called us for. It's these moments that you, that we were built for. God, I believe that you're turning things around on the behalf of your children everywhere. I believe that you will, even right now, give us a supernatural strength on the inside that helps us to walk out every moment, every assignment, every hard thing that we're having to face. Lord, you promised us you'd always be present. So as much as sometimes it feels like we're in hard seasons, we can stand on your word and thank you that we're not going through them alone. Father, would you cover us? I just plead the blood of Jesus over every house, over every family, over every mind, over every person. Encamp your angels around us now in the name of Jesus. Heal those of us who are sick. Touch those of us who are suffering. Strengthen those of us who are weak. Send resources to those of us who are feeling lack. Please, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of all power. And we stand on your promises that you've made to us over and over in Scripture. You'll be with us. This is your fight to handle. All we have to do is stand on your promises and believe. Thank you, Father, that even in a moment like this when Thomas doubted, you showed up to make sure that Thomas would have what he said he needed to believe. So, Lord, we declare now that we believe all over. Come on, everybody under the sound of my voice, just declare now to God, I believe, Father. I believe in you. I believe in your power. I believe in your word. I stand on you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Master. We are yours. We are surrendered. We are submitted. Amen. That was an amazing service. Right now, go ahead and take a minute and subscribe to us on YouTube and like our Facebook page. And then meet us on Tuesday at 8 p.m. on Facebook for our City Conversations. This is where we have an amazing conversation about faith, culture, and the church. Today starts our new Sunday schedule. We'll be broadcasting PC's message on Facebook at 5 p.m. So go ahead and share it with your friends and your family so they can be blessed too. I know this is going to be an amazing week for y'all. I'll see y'all Tuesday.